In the last episode, we spoke about planning permission and building regulations as they relate to outbuildings. In this episode, I will be talking about the design of the Ultimate Garden Workshop, as well as some tips to save some money if you're considering building one yourself. And I promise this is the last setup episode, the next time we will actually be building something. <laughs> So the area that I've got to work with is roughly six meters in the longest direction. And I don't really want to go any deeper into my garden than about three meters. In fact, one of the reasons that we actually bought this house was because of the view looking onto a field. So the last thing that we want to do is cut that off. Where I'm stood now is roughly speaking where the wall of the workshop will come out to. If I was to go another meter, it's going to be about here somewhere, which really does start to cut off the garden. And because of this, combined with the fact that I don't actually think I need more than about 15 square meters on the inside of my workshop, I decided to limit the external area of the workshop to five and a half meters long by three meters wide. Now, this will definitely be a massive improvement to the six by eight foot shed that I have been working out of. The first thing that I wanted to get out of this workshop was plenty of storage for all of my power tools. I also wanted to make sure that one end of the workshop had plenty of space for me to build a workbench that I would house a table saw within. For anyone that's watched my channel before, you know I stand at this sort of wheelie trolley quite a lot. And the reason for that is it is really convenient. It's at a really nice height and it's about the area that I need to do most of what I end up building. So this is a good example of what I want to end up with. Something on wheels that I can push to one side of the workshop when I'm not using it and pull into the center of the workshop when I'm filming or I want to build something. And before committing to the sizes of the workshop, I did run through several ideas. So there was the workshop layout. Here is more of a studio or man cave layout, which has a desk TV on the wall and plenty of room for an Xbox or PlayStation. And lastly, I wanted to see if this space would work for an entertainment area. And here you can see it easily accommodates a large drinking rack a breakfast bar, as well as a small table and chairs surrounding it. So I knew that this area was going to be perfect for my needs today and potentially my needs in the future. I'm also quite keen on the workshop having a set of either French doors or barn doors, and I haven't actually made my mind up on exactly what I'll go for. And the reason for this really just comes down to access, especially when I'm wheeling out things like my table saw or I'm trying to move larger pieces of furniture in and out of the workshop. I've personally found the double doors that come with my summer house really convenient and they allow me to easily get my table saw in and out without really thinking about it and don't judge the mess i'm moving a shed at the moment so everything's just piled up in here and as well as double doors i am really keen on making sure that there's at least two windows one on the end and then one next to the door on the front of the workshop just to allow natural light in throughout the day i personally don't like always working under artificial light so letting as much natural light in as possible is really useful to me i also am just really keen to take advantage of the view of the field in my back garden Sometimes the farmer puts his sheep in there and it is nice just to watch the little lambs bouncing about. Is that weird to say? I don't know. Anyway, I, the point is I want two windows. Another thing to bear in mind is how close you're going to have your workshop to the boundary line. Now, boundary line in the eyes of planning permission is literally any boundary surrounding your property. Now, I, I'm sure like most people, don't want to waste a load of space behind my workshop. So I am keen on putting it fairly close to the fence so I don't have a lot of dead area behind it. Probably the width of me, which I haven't got a tape measure, is about 50 centimetres away. What this will allow me to do is walk down here when I'm actually cladding the back of the workshop. But it will also have another benefit, which is it will allow airflow at the back. And for those that watched the last episode, you will know that that means I am limited to a two and a half meter overall build height. It also goes against one of the conditions of building regulations being one meter away from the boundary, which means if you did want to build your workshop to be within 15 and 30 square meters on the inside, you need to make sure that it is largely built out of a non-combustible material. The workshop that I'm building is just a smidge under 15 square meters on the inside. But that being said, I still think it doesn't hurt to build this to building regulations. So I have decided that I'll be covering the back wall in a metal cladding. One, to make sure that it is compliant with building regulations, but also access around the back is going to be quite difficult. And I do not want to go around the back to treat it with a wood preserver every few years. So putting a metal cladding on it will allow me to ignore that that side of the workshop exists 
for the rest of time. Now, as I've claimed before on this YouTube channel, I do not consider myself an advanced woodworker. In fact, I consider myself a fairly below average woodworker. So I do not want this build to be really complicated. I've built roof structures before. In fact, the Pizza Hut area over there, I did a video on it, I'll link to it in the thing below. It does have one of these sort of dual pitched roofs and I couldn't be bothered to do that with the workshop. I wanted something that was gonna be a lot simpler. So I'm gonna go for a flat roof, which will have a pitch of two degrees. I think the ratio of that is one in 40, which is compliant with the regulations of a flat roof. This is gonna be considerably cheaper and easier for anyone to follow along to. And it does have the added benefit of if you are looking to have a warm roof, which I don't think I am for height reasons, then you can simply adapt this for your needs. And I'll talk more about the difference between a warm roof and a cold roof in a future video. Now, the secret to saving the most money possible on a build like this is not to go one trip at a time to your local Wix, B&Q or home base. It's take a journey down to your local builder's merchant, have a conversation with someone in there and explain that you are in the process of building a workshop that will require you to spend probably two to three thousand pounds on materials. Once they know this, they are gonna get their little notebook out and work out the best discount possible. And I can almost guarantee you that this will work out considerably cheaper than going to one of the stores that I mentioned previously. And a great example of this saving is this jumbo bag of building sand from Wix, which will set you back 75 pounds. You will also be charged a total of 30 pounds for bulk delivery, unless you spend over a certain amount. And when I compared this to the price that I was quoted from heavies, I was very shocked as they were pretty much half of the price. The way builders merchants operate does mean that prices will be slightly different for everyone. And I suspect that free delivery will be based on how far you live from that particular store. All of my dealings so far with them have been great and I'll have a link to their website below so you can check them out online. Another benefit of the design that I've gone for should mean that I do not need a load of really fancy tools to actually get it built. The main things most people are going to need to make a build like this considerably easier is firstly a good miter saw and secondly an impact driver. Now an impact driver is a good replacement if you're not planning to put this thing together with nails or a nail gun. Personally, I think most people will find using screws considerably easier, but if your preference is nails and you've got a nail gun, then you go for it, you do you. And whilst having access to other power tools is obviously always gonna make things a little bit easier, you'll probably find yourself the vast majority of the time reaching for the miter saw and your impact driver. And to be honest, I think that that's everything you need to know about the design of the Ultimate Garden Workshop at this stage. I will be insulating the walls and the roof, but more on that in future episodes. But now you know way more about the design of the Ultimate Garden Workshop, it is finally time to get building. And to do that, we are gonna need to start with the concrete base.